Hi, thanks so much um, for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Um, along with Frank Maudry, I direct Red Moon. And at Red Moon, we create spectacles. One of the things that spectacles do is they celebrate. And being that this is my 15th wedding anniversary, I'd like to acknowledge that moment. And my wife, Tria, somewhere, hopefully. There she is. I love you. Um, we have pulled from contemporary art and ancient theatrical forms in order to create a, um, a, a unique performance style that is equal parts pageantry, puppetry. Uh, uh, the next one is gadgetry, <laughs> acrobatics, and ephemera. Um, the point of this work is always the same. It's to disrupt habit. It's to uh, break down the space, the barriers. Um, Samuel Beckett called habit, the mind-numbing habit. He called it, um, he, said, he had this quote, and the quote was something like, um, habit is the ballast that chains the dog to its own vomit. Um, so these spectacles are aiming to unchain the dog to uh, call people together to witness themselves, one another, and their environment with, I, somebody called, said earlier, new eyes, new eyes. Um, this show was designed to bring people to Logan Square. We worked with, uh, to bring people together, really. We worked with uh, over 12 different community organizations, from a gang intervention program with the YMCA, to uh, the Copernicus Senior Citizen, Senior Citizen Center, to um, create a community interactive event in, in, in Logan Square. And it drew over 10,000 people to that area, pre-gentrified Logan Square, that is, um, in, in a single evening. Um, this next show was um, in, really intended to draw people to a generally overlooked just masterpiece of landscape architecture, the one-time site of the 1893 Chicago World's Fair down in Jackson Park, um, designed by Frederick Olmsted. This next thing is we call it the ladder machine, and it was really designed to go anywhere from city street to Navy Pier to a uh, housing project and just pierce mundane living for one moment of pure beauty and awe. We created Sink Sank Sunk, this next show. Um, Sink Sank Sunk took place in Ping Tong Park. Now, Ping Tong Park sits between 18th Street, the 18th Street Bridge, um, the, the, there's, a, there's a freight line with an L line running over that. There's the Chicago River with the barge traffic down that. And then in the background, you can actually see the elevator bridge that crosses the river that had a commuter line on that. Um, the story that it told was of, um, of a jilted mayor. And his love loss leads him to a kind of psychotic rage and, and accidental homicide. The funeral for the victim of that hom homicide came down the Chicago River, and it was a Viking procession. It was uh, replete with rolling chimes and fire, lots of fire. When, when I was a kid, I was caught playing with matches, and um, <laughs> my parents decided the, the appropriate punishment would be that I would um, have to light an entire box, 250 um, matches, one at a time. The last one was even more spectacular than the first. <laughs> it was fantastic. <laughs> I loved it. Um, that was the kid I was. I was a catapult maker, you know, a spitball shooter. I, that, I was a ravine rat. I was too much. And it wasn't unusual to have one parent or another lean over me and say, you're making a spectacle of yourself. <laughs> I was not um, staying in my place. Theater's place, generally, is the, uh, is the chamber behind the ticket booth, the tightly controlled chamber where the audience sits, the lights go down, and we see the drama unfold between the actions and dialogue of characters on a set accented by lights. You see, spectacle in the art world is a bad word, um, too, actually. Um, it's, it, it means excessive or fluffy or showy. So, so the modernist maxim is that um, Form must follow function. Where form exceeds function, when it gets flashy or extravagant or showy, that's spectacle. When it no longer serves the story, that's spectacle. These um, shows, they do not stay in their places, right? Um, they spill into the streets and the beaches. Stories, we're told, don't, um, don't need uh, ladder machines or confetti cannons. Um, so the, the assumption here, though, is that theater is a storytelling form, that it's, that it's a narrative medium. And that may be true, 
but I think we'll lose that battle, or I fear we will. Um, I don't know how we can compete with the magic device that sits in everybody's um, briefcases now that can call up a TED conference at will, right? That of any length match to your, what your specific needs are, whether you need, what, is, what were the choices, jaw dropping or inspiring, and you can even tell it how many minutes you have and maybe you can tell it you're depressed. We just can't compete. If, you, if, if it's story that we're after, there are better places to go and more convenient ones too, but theater is an essentially social medium. It is a living, breathing art. And in, in that it is that thing, it may be our saving grace. Because the, well, de Tocqueville observed, right, that one of the great measures of democracy, the health of a democracy, is the degree of cultural participation. The greater the, the degree of cultural participation among our citizens, he said, the healthier the democracy. And yet we live in a time of just like in, increasingly we live in this privacy assured by and reinforced by commercial interest. Even those activities that seem ideally suited to social interaction have become sources of communal isolation. Right? Um, our private, our public spaces are being defied and redefined by the private experiences of phones and pods, and it doesn't have to be like this. Spectacle shows us a way out. Spectacle can unchain the dog. Here's the Tomatina Festival. Here's the running of the bulls in Pamplona, Spain. Uh, the next thing is a French company, the Royal Deluxe. The following thing is a, uh, the, what they call the, the flower carpet festival in Brussels. This entire design is made up of freshly bloomed flowers. Um, and Red Moon Spectacles, too, are designed to exploit this living relationship between art, audience, and environment. So the Viking procession was extravagant, yes, but it was also a moment of ritual. It was a moment when the audience was transported. They were asked to get up from their comfortable seats and walk to the river's edge where suddenly they were cast as the attendees of the funeral. They were suddenly not spectators or bystanders, but active participants. Um, yeah, <laughs> increasingly, uh, well, Let's see. We've heard it so many times that it's hard for me to, um, to say again almost, but we do live in a time when um, social change has become a necessity, right? The uh, new ways of living, learning, and uh, being can no longer be the province of an avant-garde or a select group of utopians. Creative solutions have become an imperative. If you could go to our um, very sad and cliche picture of the polar bear, that would be great. Right? But the, stra the, the, the um, extravagance of spectacle is not gratuitous, it's a statement. It's a statement of our ability to think beyond our current reality to another. It reminds us of the malleability of our circumstances. Many of you won't recognize this next um, image. It's actually the facade of this very building in which we sit. Um, behind each of these windows are two ordinary overhead projectors, each operated by a puppeteer. Um, together, but separated by floors and, and um, unable to see or hear one another, they coordinated thousands of tiny hand-illustrated, hand-colored images to create a single seamless screen. This was a collaborative effort. Um, professional artists from Red Moon working side by side with students of Columbia College and other apprentice artists to uh, activate the Museum of Contemporary Art. But as fantastic, amazing, persuasive, strange, and beautiful as this giant projected comic book was, it was not the star of the show. The star of the show was the effort behind it. When at the end of the show, the audience, uh, the um, performer stood between the light and the screen in order to cast their shadow for a curtain call, an audible gasp could be heard in the audience. It was a communal intake, a communal inspiration, because what they saw was the metaphor. What they saw was that thousands, that, that these people had, had, had given you know, countless hours around simple grade school technologies in order to create a single moment of beauty. Together with the audience, they had transformed the plaza 
They had transformed a moment in time. Let me just return one last time to Ping Tom Park. So Ping Tom Park, we could be interrupted by the traffic on any of these um, venues at any moment. Um, and so you know, whether it was an L or a barge or a freight train, we needed to weave into the performance uh, uh, an acknowledgment of that interruption. So when the L came by, the performers were to stop whatever they were doing in mid-action, turn to the train, and wave in a longing gesture of hello. It was the fruitful wave, fruitless wave of a child, right, full of the hopeless desire to connect. We did this for weeks. <laughs> we, uh, we started doing it. You know, we would be in production meetings and stand up and turn and wave. Um, on the final evening of the final performance, the performers turned to the L train to wave, and they saw in the train windows pasted cardboard hands waving back. Spectacle, I say, is not a reflection of excess. It's a change in the uh, perceived function of art. It's moving art from the sophisticated social conversation, sophisticated formal conversation, to a social engagement. From storytelling to community generating. From impregnable to permeable. From uh, authoritative to participatory. The ingenuity of spectacle reminds us of our ability, our ability to transform. The ritual and pomp of spectacle calls us to bear witness to our mutual interconnectedness and interests. The uh, wildness of spectacle pierces our fear and reminds us, uh, reinvigorates us for the work to come. At Red Moon, we create these spectacles not to discuss big ideas, but to experience the biggest, most incomprehensibly simple idea of them all. Our journey here on this earth is but momentary. Our stay extends through the ones we touch, one way or another, forever. Thank you.